Good morning, and welcome to you all to our service this morning. We give a special welcome to any visitors who are worshipping with us and to those who are joining us online. Let us worship God. Let us sing the hymn number 112, hymn 112, God Whose Almighty Word. Let us pray. Almighty God, we bow in worship before you this morning. We acknowledge that you are our creator and the creator of the world in which we live. We praise you that you first commanded the light to shine out of darkness and brought the universe into being. We thank you that you have brought us in safety to the light of a new day and to this first day of the week when we can meet here to worship you. So help us to appreciate your greatness and your care for your creation. Help us to give you the worship and the praise which you deserve. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son to be the light of the world. Thank you that he left the glory of heaven to come to earth to show us your glory and your grace, to teach us your ways, to die on the cross to save us from our sins. Merciful God, forgive us for Jesus' sake, for all the wrong we have done and all the good we have failed to do, for every attitude and every thought that grieves you, for every way in which we have contributed to the sorrows and suffering of our world. Wash away our sins. 
Make us pure in heart and give us grace to live as your children, like Jesus Christ, your Son. Gracious God, thank you for sending your Spirit to illumine our minds, to convict us of our sins, to bring us to repentance and faith in Christ. Shine in our hearts as we worship you this morning. Speak to us from your word and give us understanding. Help us to see Christ more clearly, to love him more dearly, and to follow him more nearly day by day. Inspire and equip us by your Spirit for the work you have for us to do. Then send us out from this place filled with the love of Christ and the power of your Spirit to serve you and bring your light and truth to a dark and needy world. For we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, boys and girls, can you tell me, are there any photographs of people on display in your house? Put up your hand if you've got photographs with people. Okay, good. Who's in those photographs, those people? Who are they? Are they some of your family, maybe? Yeah? Maybe even some of you when you were younger? Yeah? Okay, I brought a photograph from our house. There we are. There's, those are two of our grandchildren. Okay? They were only a day or two old. And they were born on the same day. So do you know what we call them if they're brothers and sisters born on the same day? Yes. Yeah? Twins, that's right, twins. Okay, so, so we were happy to have twins in our family, although they were a lot of work for their parents when they were born. Now, over a hundred years ago, in part of Africa, people weren't happy to have twins. And some people thought that twins were the work of an evil spirit. And so they did a terrible thing. They killed the twins by leaving them outside the house to die. That was a terrible thing to do. But those people didn't know that God made us all, that God loves us all, and God gave his son Jesus to die for us, to show us his way of love. And there was a lady from Scotland, from Dundee, called Mary Slessor, who went to Africa to tell people about Jesus and his love for us. And when she found out that people were killing twins, she did everything she could to stop them. Uh, when she found twins that had been left to die, she rescued them and found homes for them where they'd be loved and cared for. And she told people about Jesus. And when people came to believe in Jesus, their hearts were changed, and they didn't want to kill twins or other people anymore. They wanted to show people God's love. And Mary Slessor went to Africa because she loved Jesus, and because she loved Jesus, she wanted the people of Africa to know about him. And she remembered that Jesus said to his disciples, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to observe all I have commanded you. 
and I will be with you always to the close of the age. And that was a, a command and a promise Jesus made to his first disciples and to us too. He wants us to go wherever he sends us, to tell other people about him, to show his love to them, and he promises that he will be with us and help us. Now we're going to sing number th hymn number 363. We have a gospel to proclaim. Let us hear the word of God as we find it in the Old Testament, 
in the book of the prophet Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah 43 verses 1 to 11. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned the flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give men in exchange for you and people in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Lead out those who have eyes but are blind, who have ears but are deaf. All the nations gather together and the peoples assemble. Which of them foretold this and proclaimed to us the former things? Let them bring in their witnesses to prove they were right, so that others may hear and say it is true. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Saviour. Amen. Now the choir will sing the anthem we are your people, O oh Lord. Thank you. 
Let us hear the word of God as we find it in the New Testament, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, reading from verse 16 to 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. May God bless to us these readings from his word. To his name be the glory and the praise. We sing again uh, hymn 559, There is a Redeemer. We sometimes speak about famous last words. Famous last words can be ill-considered and foolish, like the famous last words of the American Civil War general, whose last words before he was shot and killed by a a sniper (laughs) was, they couldn't shoot an elephant at this But sometimes famous last words are well considered and wise. They tell us what the person considered important and what he or she wished others to remember and do after he'd gone. Jesus' famous last words before he 
left his disciples to return to his Father in heaven, as recorded at the end of Matthew's Gospel, are sometimes known as the Great Commission. Jesus' parting words were instructions to his 11 disciples and instructions to his disciples of every age and generation what he wanted them and what he wants us to remember and do to complete and fulfill the task he has given us to do on earth. Jesus said to his disciples, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus began this great commission with a statement of his authority. We're used to various kinds of authority in this world, the authority of parents at home, of teachers at school, of employers at work, of uh, the police and the, the law courts, of national and local government. But Jesus' authority is higher and greater than all these other authorities. God the Father, the ultimate source of all authority, has given all authority on earth and in heaven to his Son. When God raised his Son from the dead, he exalted him to his right hand, a position of authority. Paul says in Philippians, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And when we join the church, we make a profession of faith, we confess Jesus Christ as Lord. Do we really mean that? Jesus had to say to people on one occasion, why do you call me Lord if you don't do what I say? If Jesus is Lord, then we do what he tells us. We accept his authority and we obey his commands. A Roman centurion that we read about in the Gospels understood that. He said to Jesus, I am a man under authority, and I have soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to another, do this, and he does this. And the Gospels tell us that Jesus marveled at him. And he said, I have not found such great faith in Israel. If we are disciples of Jesus, we are like soldiers in his army or servants in his household. We have no right to choose which of his commands we'll obey. We accept his authority and we obey his commands, all his commands. And when Jesus left his disciples, he gave them this great command. Go and make disciples. And we are here today because Jesus' disciples obeyed that command. They went to people of all nations. They spread the good news. They called on people to believe, to follow Christ, to become his disciples. And those who became disciples made other disciples. And so the good news was passed on from generation to generation. 
And Jesus calls on us today, if we are his disciples, to go and make disciples. If we are disciples, we don't just passively accept Jesus' teaching. If we are disciples, we aren't just content to be members of the church in name only. If we are Jesus' disciples, like, like the first disciples, then we've answered Jesus' call to leave everything and follow him. We've had an encounter with Jesus that has changed our life. We no longer live our own way, but Jesus' way. We are committed to trusting, to serving, to following and worshiping him. We are involved in his work, working for him in the world, helping others in need and helping other people to know and follow Jesus to become his disciples. Jesus calls on us to be disciples and to make disciples wherever we are and wherever Jesus sends us. He calls us to live and work for him, to share the good news, the good news that God loves us, that God loves the world so much that he gave his son to die to save us from our sins. The good news that God raised his son from the dead and that he can raise us to new life in him. Jesus told his disciples to go and make disciples. And he continued baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We baptize children and adults in church because Jesus has commanded us to do so. Baptism doesn't make us disciples, but it's a picture of how God in Christ makes us his own and makes us his disciples. We baptize in the name of God, God who is this Trinity Sunday. We think about God being Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We baptize in the name of God the Father because God is a Father who knows us and loves us and cares for us, a God who made us, and he made us for a relationship with himself. But we only become his children when we are born again of his spirit, when we are adopted or received into his family. We baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son. Jesus Christ is the only begotten or, or natural Son of God. He came to earth. He died for us to take away our sins so that we might become God's children like him. The water of baptism can't wash away our sins, but when we turn from our sins to Christ and trust in him and his death for us, then the Bible says the blood of Jesus washes away our sins. It makes us new people, people who have a new nature, the nature of God's children. We baptize in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who is God eh, working in our lives today. When we accept God's authority, when we commit ourselves to follow Christ, we are baptized not just with water, but with the Holy Spirit. God comes by his Spirit to live in us, to make us new people, to lead us and guide us to empower and enable us to live as Jesus' disciples day by day. Jesus told his disciples to, to go and make disciples, baptizing and teaching, teaching them, he said, to observe all that I have commanded you. Baptism marks the beginning of a Christian life, but it's only the beginning. It must be followed by teaching and learning. 
When parents bring their children for baptism, they promise to teach their children the truths and duties of the Christian faith. And it do, baptism does children no good if parents don't keep those promises to teach them about Christ, about who he is and what he's done for us, to teach them how Christ lived and how he wants us to live. Baptism must be followed by teaching for adults as well as children because we all need teaching. We all have much to learn. Indeed, the word disciple simply means a learner, someone who has an L plate on his life. So we should always be learning. If we stop learning, we stop being disciples. And so we should take every opportunity that we have in public to worship God, in private to, to read and study his word in order to learn more, to grow more like Christ, and to be able to teach others that they too may come to know and follow him, to become his disciples. Jesus told us to, to teach, that peop, to observe all that he has commanded us because his teaching involves every area of our life. He wants our whole lives to become more like him. He wants us to have the same kind of relationship that he had with his heavenly father. He wants us to show the world that we truly are his disciples. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the end of the age. Those words, I am with you always, have brought great comfort and encouragement to Christians down through the centuries. And in times of trouble and sorrow, in times when, when others leave us or let us down, in times when, when death separates us from those we love, it's wonderful to have Jesus promise, I am with you always. But that promise like all God's promises in his word, are conditional on us obeying his commands. If we don't go with Jesus and do what he commands us to do, then we shouldn't expect him to be with us. But if we do go with him at his command, we can be sure that he will keep his promise to be with us. David Livingston, who obeyed Jesus' command to go and make disciples of the people of Africa, said that God's word was the word of a gentleman, and a gentleman keeps his promises. And once when he was back home in in Glasgow, receiving an honorary degree, uh, he said in, in his speech, he said, what supported me far from home, far from family and friends was God's word, I am with you always. He said, I staked my life on God's word and his word never failed. David Livingston accepted Christ's authority. He obeyed his commands. He put Jesus' promise to the test and proved it true. And so he knew that Jesus was with him. When he was far from home, he wasn't lonely. Jesus was there. When he faced death, he wasn't afraid. He had Jesus' promise that he would be with him always. And Livingston's experience and the experience of many Christians around the world and down through the centuries can be our experience today. 
we can, be, we can experience God's presence in our daily lives if we'll accept his authority and use our life to serve him, to do what he has commanded us to do, he will be with us always until that great day when he comes again and we will be forever with the Lord. Amen. Now let us sing the hymn 251, I the Lord of sea and sky. Intimations are on the service sheet. There will be coffee after church today, and you're all welcome to go around to the new hall for coffee. 
Uh, word has been received from Presbytery that there's to be a service of healing in Kincase Church today at 4 p.m. Uh, these services uh, are on the first Sunday of each month in Kincase or the Scottish Episcopal Church. Fraser's on holiday until Friday. If anyone requires the service of a, min of a minister, please get in touch with the session clerk. Uh, communion next Sunday, 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. There's details there. And there's a retiring offering for Kirk Session funds. And a couple of other notices. Today, the Reverend Chimwemwe Herbert Mwenwuka, I think, is being formally inducted as the new minister of Piri Congregation, our partner church in Malawi. Uh, the service is from 9 to 12, and we pray a blessing upon it and the people there. And then, could we remember in our prayers the family and the manse as Valentina is in Cross House Hospital awaiting an MRI scan, having had a minor stroke. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your Son, Jesus Christ, has called us to be his disciples. We thank you that we have heard the good news of his life and death and resurrection. We thank you that his Holy Spirit has brought us to faith and new life in Christ. We thank you that we enjoy all the benefits and blessings of being your children and members of your church, your family on earth. Lord God, you call us all to the task of mission, to make known the good news of Christ, to proclaim the gospel to all we meet through word and deed. Teach us what that means and make us ready to fulfill that calling when the opportunity arises. Fill us with your love for other people and give us wisdom and courage to speak a word which will point people to Christ. Sovereign Lord, you call us all to be witnesses for Christ, but there are some you set apart for a particular calling, evangelists, ministers, preachers, and teachers of your word, each with a special responsibility to lead others to you. We remember especially the new minister at Piri Congregation in Malawi as he is ordained this morning. We pray for him and all ministers of your word that you would enable them to teach your truth faithfully and to speak your word in the power of the Holy Spirit that those who hear may come to know Christ and trust and follow him. We pray for others called to missionary service, either at home or overseas as ministers or teachers, as health workers, as agriculturalists, and in many other ways. We ask you to use the varied knowledge and skills you have given them in the work of your kingdom. Encourage those who work in difficult conditions and keep safe those who work in dangerous places. Gracious God, we thank you for all who in different ways strive to fulfill the Great Commission, taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. Teach us to see their work as our work, their needs as our needs, their opportunities as our opportunities, and so challenge us and your people to support them always through our prayers, our money, and our love, demonstrating our appreciation of their work and our concern for your kingdom. Merciful God, we pray for Valentina from the manse and for all who have received bad news about themselves or about others, which has caused them worry or distress. For those who have received an unfavorable diagnosis or await tests or an operation, for those placed in a difficult or uncertain situation, 
for those concerned about loved ones far away. Assure them of the good news that you are with them and with your people everywhere. Speak to them your word of peace and help them to trust in your love. Almighty God, whose love and goodness to us never fails, accept our gifts of money which we bring and dedicate to you this morning as a token of our gratitude to you, and help us to use all the gifts and talents you have given us in the work of your kingdom for the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our uh, closing hymn is hymn 248, For My Sake and the Gospels Go. grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore.